Another edition of Soul School. I'm Calvin Lincoln. And really, really quick, a look back at the one and only Joe Jackson through his children, of course. And uh, when I start thinking about Joe Jackson, I immediately start thinking about a very polarizing figure who had an unquenchable thirst to make sure that his kids actually really, really uh, made something of themselves. And a lot of people choose to be negative on that subject. But let me break it down to you like this and of course your opinion is your own opinion and uh, everybody's entitled to it and respect it but at the end of the day I have a tremendous amount of respect of the one and only Joe Jackson what he was actually able to do through his children and certainly the cat has changed my life as well as uh, millions and millions and millions of other people and yourself even whether you want to admit it or not and uh, he made it all possible it was definitely him and when I started thinking about um October of 69 through August of 70 when uh, I Want You Back dropped in February ABC dropped and uh, August the third album dropped and uh, the mania that went down we had never seen anything like that I mean certainly never anything like that and uh, all the way through the middle 70s and uh, not being able to uh, write his children of course wanting to express their freedoms and uh, things like that he was actually able to get them a deal over at cbs when they really didn't have a lot of bargaining power or whatever and he was the bargaining chip he was the one and uh when i started thinking about that he was able to get that done and transition over to cbs and uh michael owning the catalog and of course janet who nobody saw coming take off the way she did it was all possible through joe and uh you know those uh so-called uh rough days of going through indiana to chicago to the regal theater playing with the stair steps and dyke and the blazers and all those just different people and um it's just amazing when you start looking back at that and you have to take into context the attitude of the country in the context of the time that was you know, when all everything was actually happening and what he was actually able to uh, produce was an absolute miracle. Gary, Indiana is, is rough. It's rough. It was rough then. It's rough now. And, um, you know, <laughs> really, to be honest, I was I'm going to give you something personal because I don't like to throw salt on other people and throw blanket statements out there like, well, you can't say this or whatever. I'm just going to give you a personal experience of mine. My kids made the National Junior Olympics in 2005 through USA Track and Field. Long story short, we were in Indianapolis, Indiana. I had map quested 2300 Jackson Street, and um, I wanted to go see the house. I just wanted to go see it. I wanted my kids to see it because I started thinking back like, wow, there's no way I can be this close and not go see it. I have to go pay homage. And um, one of the members of... Uh, Roger Troutman and Zap, who will go unnamed, he's a very close friend of mine, told me, Calvin, do not go through Gary. And a matter of fact, I'm going to throw his name out there because I'm sure he doesn't mind. His name is Robert Smith. You know him as Big Rob. He's like, Calvin, Gary is crazy, man. I said, man, well, you know, I live in Oakland, blah, 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 at that time or whatever. I wasn't up here in Vallejo yet. And he said, Calvin, I'm going to say it to you again, man. Brothers out there are off the hook, man. They off the hook. You be messing around and y'all may get y'all van took and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he was saying, man, cats is crazy. So, in other words, for Joe to get them up out of that environment alone, he should be applauded. And to get them to where he was able to actually get them. Forget the pinnacle of music and all this and that. Just to get them as a black father out of that environment. And God knows nowadays we need a lot more black fathers like that that's going to keep you know, the kids from snatching your mother's purse and hitting my mother upside the head. And, you know, my mother's not here anymore. But you, you get what I'm trying to say. And when you start thinking about the killings and stuff that's going on in Cincinnati and Chicago and all these other just different people, there was a loud cry. There is still a loud cry 
for the Joe Jackson type cats to get in there and, and get them houses underneath control. And, uh, you know, people like to get on the other side of it and he abused his kids and there's a difference in, in spankings and abuse. But let me put it to you like this. As we all evolve in the life and, uh, you know, sometimes your children will go out and say things such as Michael and Janet or whatever it may be. It's all part of the processing. But when it came time to go to court and everybody in L.A., for the most part, outside of maybe a cat like Eddie Griffin and people like that who I may not know, turned their backs on Michael Jackson when it came time to go to court in Santa Maria, which is not too far from here, um, who did he have with him? He had Joe Jackson, he had his daddy with him. You know, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, when he gets into trouble, he knows who he can count on, who's going to really protect him. And at the end of the day, I know a few people that was actually in that This Is It band. I've had them on Soul School, you know, uh, all seriousness. Uh, I know about three people that's actually that was actually in that band that was in Michael's band. And when it came down to a lot of the nonsense and foolishness and stuff that was going on in reference to the controlling aspects of uh I won't mention their names but the corporate people the corporate structure you guys all know who I'm talking about basically there was a few statements made here and there like if my daddy was here my father was here y'all wouldn't be pulling the stuff that y'all pulling <laughs> you know at the end of the day and that kind of stuff got people a little bit on edge because nobody wanted to see Joe Jackson. At, in, at the end of the day, he was about his kids. He probably would kill you about his kids. And at the end of the day, you know, he was on Barry Gordy's rear and everybody else's. He was about his kids. At the end of the day, he was very upset when One Bad Apple, who was written by Hal Jackson, was given to the Osmonds and rejected by Barry Gordy. He started looking at him with a third eye you know he's i mean you know i don't like to get negative about this but that man was about his kids he was about his kids and they were a lot cooler than what you may think you know it's just you know everybody's family goes through it whether they want to admit it or not and you can choose to kind of be on the negative tip but you know i brought that up to add balance to where i'm going i choose to think about october of 69 going into 70 71 the joy that i saw his family bring everybody and it wasn't possible if it wasn't for him i started thinking about the joy that i got when i was in middle school when blame it on the boogie i came on the destiny album and they started to kind of learn production and stuff like that the triumph tour and the can you feel it video and um you saw the movie you saw the movie that jermaine produced you saw what he went through in reference to putting his kids in the Volkswagen minibus and taking them to the gigs and getting robbed and fighting and the kids are scared and that man comes out and it's like, don't worry about it. We go to the pawn shop. We get some more instruments and blah. There's nothing that's going to stop us. And when you start thinking about a strong man like that, black or white, that's about his kids like that, that made it happen, you know, to choose to not um, look at the positives and the strength and all of that and, and uh, you know, it's just uh, it's just really, really kind of a, an unfair type of deal, especially, like I say, when you look at what's going on now. And I'll throw this out there from a personal experience. I've been doing soul school for perhaps it's been over to almost 25 years. And I know just about everybody you can think of in the business from that old school era. I mean, whoever you want to name, you know, I know them. Or I, you know, and I've had a brother that's played with Donald Byrd and the Crusaders and just different people. And, um, you know, first cousin played with Barry White. So I was around people. I'll just put it to you like this. And I'm still around people. And I'm dealing with the business now, right now, which is different production companies and stuff like that, besides just a little local access thing I do that I control. And I'm telling you, if you don't separate the art from the music or from what they do, I'm telling you, if you start you know, getting to know these people personally, most of them, you probably wouldn't like any of them. I'm just going to keep it real. Children out of wedlock, all kinds of crazy stuff that's going on. Matter of fact, some of these people make Joe Jackson look like Walt Disney. And I'm telling you what I know. I'm not telling you what I think. And like I said, I don't like to throw blanket statements out there. I'm telling you from experience, some of these people that you love are so crazy about are just straight assholes <laughs> and uh, you wouldn't like them and you wouldn't like the way that they treat their women and all this and that. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've seen it. And, uh, you know, so it's just one of those things that I would say it's better suit to focus on 
the joy that these people have brought in us. And like I say, the Jackson family, there's never been anything like it. I mean, at the end of the day, the Partridge family ended up getting a TV deal as a family act because of that Jackson 5 mania. The Osmonds, who were a barbershop quartet, I used to watch them on the Andy Williams show, ended up getting stuff through Mike uh, uh, Mike Curb's MGM in reference to trying to copy the J5 and stuff like that, even though they were around before. They open up a lot of doors. You start thinking about David um, Pitt Conley and, and Townsend. I think David Townsend is his name. Ed Townsend's son from Motown, who uh, were part of the group Surface and uh, wrote, you know, uh, Only You Can Make Me Happy and Shower Me With Your Love. Well, they were doing production on Reby Jackson's album through CBS, getting money. And had it not been for Joe Jackson having Reby, they don't make that money. James Ingram from a group called Revelation Funk. You know, they used to play Vegas in just different eras before Quincy Jones had them, before he was making money. And um, from what I hear um, from somebody who I really, really respect, um, his first check he got for writing PYT on that Thriller album with Quincy was either five hundred or eight hundred thousand dollars. The first royalty check that he got from that Thriller album. You think that's possible? Him to make that kind of money if it's not for Joe Jackson? The Cats from the rock group Total. David Pite, Steve Picaro, Jeff Picaro, and um, those those just some of the greatest musicians. Uh, ever studio cats ever quincy contracted him and brought him in to do a lot of uh that thriller album with him along with some other people and um you know those cats are like stone cold rock r&b you know they're bad but had it not been for joe jackson having michael him you know of course along with uh uh with with um Catherine Jackson or whatever, but he pushed. It was the great push by him. He made a lot of people money. A lot. I could really go into a whole bunch of just different um, situations like that. But um, you know, long story short, Joe Jackson is a cat that we must not ever forget. And uh, you know, I would just say that uh, you're entitled to your own opinions, and of course, they're all respected here. You know, I don't not go sit up and be arguing with people or whatever may be your opinion is your opinion and uh, mine is mine yours is definitely respected and uh, at the end of the day I choose to think about the joy that he has brought us all let's get to some more entertainment really quick and I'll be back with a final note in a few moments <laughs> 